Hello! This video is on two different things. Um, we're going to talk about discrete versus continuous functions and we are also going to talk about domain and range. So we need to talk about a couple of vocabulary words. The first is domain. <clears throat> domain is thought of as all of the first values, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or it's the x-coordinates. And range is all of the second values or more commonly talked about it's the y-coordinates. A continuous graph, um, those are graphs with connected lines or curves. That means it includes values that are not integers. Discrete graphs, they are graphs that contain points that are only integers. So there is not a line connecting the points. That's important. So we are just jumping into examples right away. So there's two things, well actually three things to identify for each graph that we're going to talk about. The first is whether it's discrete or continuous, and then we're also going to find the domain and range. So you guys are going to notice that we write the domain and range differently depending on what type of graph it is. So if I'm looking at the one on the left, you can see there's just points. There's no line connecting it, there's no curve, nothing like that. That means that it is a discrete graph. Just points, no line connecting it. Now, let's talk about the domain and range. So domain is all of the x values. And when we have um, a discrete graph, we use these brackets. Kind of hard for me to write on my iPad. These curvy, or like curly cute little brackets um, to indicate the domain and range, the numbers that go inside. So remember, domain is like your x's. So really, it's just asking, what are all the x values that we see in the graph? So if I look at this first point here, what's the x value there? Well, that first x value there is going to be negative 3. And then I would just keep doing it for the next point. So the next point here, that is negative 2. And then I would keep doing that. So negative 2 negative 1, and I also have 0, 1, and 2, and then I would close it. And now my range, well, that's just the corresponding y values that go with my x values. So if I start here, what's the y value for that point? Well, open up my bracket here. The y value there is 4. My y value here is 3 and I go ahead and I write the y value for each point so 2, 1, 0 and negative 1. That is my domain and range here. It's just the x values and just the y values. Let's look at the graph on the right. So this one is a continuous graph and I know it's continuous because I see that there's a curve going through that connects all the points that are really there. So Talking about domain and range, when we have a continuous graph, we generally write it as an inequality. That's just the fastest way to do it. So the easiest way to do it is if we're thinking domain, so I'm talking about x's. If it's a continuous graph, the easiest thing to do is to find the smallest x value, so that's here, and the biggest x value, which is here. That is going to set the boundaries for our inequality. So our smallest x value is negative 7. Okay. Oops, let's try to write that a little neater there. So that is negative 7. Sorry, it's being a little finicky with me. So negative 7. And we also know the max is going to be 6. So then I just have to figure out what goes in here. Well, I know that this is almost like kind of an and compound inequality where the graph is between those two points. So I can write it as less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. And that would be my final answer there. So I have all these x values anywhere from negative 7 up to 6 are my possible x values. If I want to look at y, if I my max y there and my minimum y. So now it's the lowest one. So notice... I have a low point in my graph here and here, but this is the lowest point, so I go with that. So then my range would become negative 5 is less than or equal to y, because I'm talking about y, 
which is less than or equal to 4. And that is my inequality for my range. All right, my next graph I can see is just points. It's got to be discrete. Let's talk about our domain. We're going to use those brackets. We're talking about our x values here. And now if you get tired of listing these out because we have kind of a lot, you can actually list the first couple. So like I can see I have an x value of 1, 2, 3. It's going up by 1s. You can actually use shorthand. So put your 3 and then do dot, dot, dot. And then put your max, which is 9. Do the same with my y's. So my range, my minimum is going to be 50. And I notice I'm going up by 50s because I'm at 100 and then 150. And then I can do dot, dot, dot. And then my max is going to be 400. And then close my brackets. Okay, moving on to the right. I see it's a line, it's connected, it's curvy. It's got to be continuous. Now let's talk about the domain here. Um, you guys might notice there's some arrows, right? There's an arrow there. And there's an arrow there. What that tells me is that the graph is actually going to infinity this way and negative infinity this way. And I don't have any boundaries on my graph, so it looks like I actually can use any x values going left or right. If I extended my graph, I would see that the more x values are used the bigger the graph gets. So for domain, you could say all real numbers, so a, r, n, or maybe you'll say negative infinity, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to infinity. Now the range is the same thing. These arrows here tell me I go to positive infinity in the y direction and negative infinity in the negative y direction. Or if you like all real numbers, you can do that. So we watch for all real numbers when we see arrows on our graph. All right, another graph. It's a, a line. It's not curvy, but it is a line, so it's got to be continuous. My domain is my x's, so here's my minimum x is 1. Oops. My minimum should have been 1, and then my maximum is going to be 5. So I'm going to write it as an inequality, so 1 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 5. Do the same thing for my y's. Find my minimum y, which is here, and my maximum y, which is here. So 3 and 4. So 3 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 4. And that's always my general setup for a continuous graph. We can actually tell, or at least get a good idea if something's discrete or continuous from a mapping diagram. Now since a mapping diagram is used here, and that's our usual x, and y. I'm going to assume that it's discrete because it's only a number or a limited number of points that they gave us. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my x's. So I can see my x's there. It's 6, 5, 2, and 1. I'm look at my y's next. Notice there's only three y's because the 5 and the 1 in the x column go to the same thing. That's okay. So I'll just write what I'm seeing. Negative 4, negative 1, and 0. All right, last slide. So again, if it's a table, I'm going to assume it's discrete because I'm given a limited number of exact points. Domain, x's. So I'm going to list 1, 4, and 8, exactly what I see. Now when I'm looking at my range or my y's, notice that my 1's repeat. We do not have to write something if it repeats. So even though there's two 1's listed, I'm only going to write 1 once in my range. I do not repeat it there. And then we have a set of ordered pairs. I'm going to go with discrete. I'm going to do my domain. Let's see, I got three. I got a five. Remember, that's your x's. My domain. So three, five, four, seven. And my range. Remember, my y's. So I see a negative two, a negative one. And then I have two zeros, but I only have to write it once. So I hope this was a good introduction to domain, range, discrete, and continuous. Remember to get your practice worksheets completed. Thanks.